I, I just want to come back to uh, something you touched on earlier, which was the, the, the rise in data privacy in terms of regulation and legislation that has happened since you've been involved in the field of research operations. So obviously, we had the EU in 2018 bring GDPR into effect, into effect, and I understand there's also been some similar legislation, albeit mainly at the state level in the US. I think California, California. passed some, yeah, some pretty strong data privacy laws, which probably touch most um, most uh, companies if they've got customers in California. What has been the impact of these uh, regulations and legislations on the way that the UX research is able to be practiced and some of the things that from an operations perspective that you need to be more mindful of than you may have necessarily been in the past? Many, many, many things. You need to make sure that people's identities are protected, names, emails. When you're talking to somebody like we're talking now, you need to make sure that they're aware that they are being recorded with their face and or their voice. You need to get um, permission to do so. You need, once they do sign, uh, legal agreements has changed uh, enormously, but you also need to make sure that all the content that you have with people's voices or their, their, their selves is removed after 24 months or getting the, or go back and get their approval again. Just making sure that the right legal agreements are signed and documented. Um, when people are reaching out and they go, hey, we need to talk to more people and I, I need all these, to, they're asking for help with um, different people to speak with and you need to protect the privacy. You just don't go sending out spreadsheets with all these people's names. That's, you know, not that that would ever happen in the past, but you do not do that. It, it, that's why research operations is so important too on just creating the processes behind actually being able to talk with somebody. And I would say if you're talking to anybody within the industry, that's one of the top things, getting people in there and protecting their privacy and getting the, the names back out for the researchers, designers, people to talk with. It was challenging and a workload and also is challenging just keeping up with what changes, right? Have I, have I brought back some bad memories, have I? Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes. Tracy. Yes, you have. Can you tell? Uh, did, no. did, did you find that during this process, I mean, I imagine you have to educate the other areas of the business as this is happening, right? Like it's not just, it's going to be as easy as it was before maybe for product teams or designers to go and speak with customers. You know, did you get any pushback from people? Did people getting grumpy? You know, you're in that operational seat, so it kind of flows to you. Like, were you getting anyone, yeah, like I said, getting grumpy about the extra red tape that you have to go through now to engage with participants? I think the biggest word that came was why. Well, why, 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 you know, when we're doing that research thing, the five whys, why? And it, what it did was we just really needed to go back and re-educate everybody because if you're not aware of all the changes, it does get frustrating. Why can't I just go talk to somebody? And once they understand what the, the guidelines are, and now everybody does because it's been around for a while, but when it was first coming out, it was really frustrating because you – just didn't have immediate access to as many people as you did in the past. And so you really had to change the way that you went about talking to people, keeping their information private and, um, and removing all that information as well when needed. 